Hey guys, it's Ross going on the Space Coach stage. I thought I'd bring you up to date with my progress on the Mueller report because obviously he's testifying in just under a couple of weeks' time to the House of Representatives. should be interesting. Um, I finished volume one, uh, which is all about Russia's attempts to interfere in the 2016 election. It's fascinating stuff when you get down into the nitty gritty. As always, this is not going to be political. This is just going to be based on facts. Um, so it's like uh, when the Access Hollywood tape came out where Trump's saying you can do whatever you want if you're famous. Within one hour of that coming out, there was already uh, stuff being released email wise. Um, so they're quickly on the case trying to defuse that situation and muddy the waters about the other candidate as well. And um, so many other things in here. It's like um, within five hours of the Russia, if you're listening, um, the GRU was already on the case trying to locate these emails. And it, as much as it's able to without revealing sources and methods, it tells you how it finds this stuff out. Like um, they compromised... Um, the various networks logging keystrokes and passwords and screenshots and all that sort of thing. Um, fascinating stuff it really is from that technical level and it goes into the details of all of these different entities uh, like the Internet Research Agency and other stuff and uh, people like Maria, uh, what's her name, Boutina and stuff like that, how they were involved uh, in organisations uh, trying to uh, get influence with people like the NRA, though it's quite successful, of course. But it's very interesting. Um, there's one thing I, I just wanted, uh, just chose this one just because it's interesting how redactions shape the text around them. So um, this is the page, just this bit here I'm going to talk about. So um, the title of the paragraph is called Structure of the Internet Research Agency. It says, Harm to ongoing matter. The agency quickly grew. <laughs> and then uh, the organisation quickly grew. And then some more redactions. And then it says, The growth of the organisation also led to a more detailed organisational structure. Well, that is interesting. I wish I knew what was all around it. Because that is really teasing. It really is. But there's other stuff that's in here that I did find interesting. It's like... um. All of Putin's oligarchs, they're all under a very tight leash by him. Um, but there was one whose name I forget um, mentions about the meetings that they have with Putin. And he personally had them on a quarterly basis. And one of them was just after the 2016 presidential election. And uh, these, essentially the director from Putin is... Um, make contact with these guys, see what you can find out, use it to our advantage. And um, he was saying um, he'd had some contact, some of the people like the Manaforts and the Gates and all those sort of things, trying to work their way into, say, the Trump organisation and get people. And Putin ex expresses scepticism that it will be successful. So it was quite funny because he basically said, <laughs> good luck, we've tried that and had no luck. Um, but yes, those oligarch meetings are very uh, interesting. And at each quarterly meeting, Putin is following up with him. What progress has he made? And also there's what they call a hands-on oligarchs meeting, where they all of the ol oligarchs uh, meet with Putin. And I do recall several years ago, I don't know if it was in the aftermath of the Kursk disaster or some big scandal that had hit Russia. And all of the oligarchs were summoned and he dressed them down in front of the cameras. I mean, that is projection of power. Can't help but admire on that level that he has that level of control. But yes, volume one details the successful attempt to undermine the presidential election. And the use of things like fake Facebook accounts and internet um, ads and uh, misleading tweets and bots and trolls and all that sort of thing to help um, muddy all of the water. So who knows what is true and what is not? And that was probably what was mo the mo biggest success of the Russian campaign. The lack of trust that now exists amongst the American people. Um, so, yes, fascinating volume one. That took me up to about page 265. The rest is volume two, which details the president's efforts to obstruct justice. So we shall see how that goes. And there'll be loads, there is loads and loads of like addendums. So the actual report, volume one, was probably about 200 pages because there was 50 odd pages beforehand that was set in the scene. 
Um, I suspect this will be another... Actually, I think the report was about 400 pages in length, wasn't it? So it'll be two to 300 pages, and then the rest is all the bonus material. I expect court documents, plea bargains, what have you. But there you go. So I just thought I'd just bring it up to date on the progress I've made with this. It is fascinating. It is time-consuming as well. Um, <laughs> the last book I read um, that was this thick that took this long was The Lord of the Rings when I was about 14 or 15. <laughs> This is as detailed as that, if not more so. But anyway, guys, like I said, just want to bring you up to date on my progress with the Mueller report. If you don't believe what I'm saying, please get your own copy, read it for yourself and make up your own mind, because that is what we should all do in these circumstances. Don't believe something just because someone says so. Find it out for yourself. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a coming topic you'd like to see discussed. Or like the video.